recovery of the air transport industry from airlines to airports to border control are going to rely on two things. One is passenger confidence and the second thing is new technology to help us achieve what we need to do. Well, CETA, which is owned by the industry and run for the industry with all of its IT and technology, has been for decades producing things like the kiosks and different biometrics and making it happen. And we're joined by Andrew O'Connor from CETA to talk to us a bit about how we're going to recover this industry. Andrew, welcome to the programme. So we've seen CETA produce things like the kiosks and biometrics. What are you doing now to take us to that next stage to make it safe to travel again? Yeah, so there's a couple of things, Alan, around that experience through the airport for the passengers, which really aims to make it as low touch as possible so that people don't need to touch all the different devices they come across in the airport. And so for sure, as you mentioned, one of the really big areas we've been working on for a few years, but which we see a lot of uh, kind of accelerated interest in is this area of biometrics. The idea that you can enroll your face as you meet the first touch point in the airport and then use your face to move through the rest of the airport. So for example, you might look into the camera as a kiosk, a self-service kiosk, and then use your face to go through um, the automatic self-service gate going from land side to airport, uh, land side to air side in the airport, and then also um, to actually open up the self-service gate boarding the aircraft. So that kind of um, leveraging of stuff that's already been done, uh, we see that there's a big extra interest in that. As I understand it, we're going to be walking through airports with a huge mask across our faces. Yes. How are you going to recognise me compared to the guy walking alongside me with a similar mask? So on that specific point, we're actually, um, the, the, the biometric kind of engines that sit within the various products that we have, so the, the engine that enrolls your face and then is used to determine who you are when it sees your face again at those additional touch points, we're modifying that right now to be able to uniquely identify people even when they are wearing a mask. It's a little bit harder because they see less of your face, the camera sees less of your face, but it is indeed possible. The other big driver, um, which I think you're touching on there, is the idea that um, air, the airline process and the government process will be somehow more joined up. There'll be some additional collaboration between governments and airlines around the, the use of face biometrics, linking face biometrics to the biometric in people's passports and so on. I think some of the initiatives that have been around for several years, such as IATA's One ID, you know, they're all pointing to that vision of the future. And the fact that really governments are the ones calling the shots in bringing travel back online is going to drive some of that collaboration. What sort of interest are you seeing at CETA in some of this new technology? Are the, are the airports and the governments actually saying to you, help us? Let's get something. I think there's a number of areas where they're saying help us and where we have something to offer. One is that low touch air, uh, airport area I already talked about, where you can leverage biometrics and um, mobile technology so that people don't have to touch as much stuff. There's also on the, on the border side, on the government side of our business, the safe to fly verification area. So the idea that people... Uh, the governments may be more interested in passengers having a, a way to report their health status, indeed leading towards that kind of health passport type idea that you're starting to see different people talking about. We see that big trend. Um, as well as those things within the airport side, for example, again, it's an area where we have a number of technologies which are used to plan where flights are located in the airport and where as travel starts up again, we can see that airports want to keep flights separated as much as possible while the volumes are small to make sure that things like flights don't take place at adjacent gates if they don't have to and there's space. Can I ask you as well, I mean, airports in general seem to have a lot of glass, a lot of plastic, um, you know, the whole design and materials for airports has been mm. one thing. Do you think going forward, or even now, retrospectively, we can change some of those materials? Are there materials that are safer? Yeah, so one of the things, uh, so two things, you know, again, I would stress that part of the idea is to 
reduce the amount of touching that needs to go on by avoiding that for passengers. But as well as that, we're also experimenting with some new materials that you can put on things like the screens of self-service kiosks, so-called self-sanitizing materials. There are some materials, clear materials, which have been proven not to hold germs, not to hold the COVID virus um, for a period of time. And therefore, you know, we're looking to trial in POC terms um, that kind of technology, that kind of surface applied to the front screens of kiosks and so on. OK, what about the cost of all of this now? Because if we if we look at how much these things are, we know that airlines are broke. We know that airports are broke. We know that a number of governments are probably broke with all the things they're trying to do to keep their countries and economies going. Who's going to pay for it and how much is it going to cost? It's about leveraging what's already out there. The fact that there are very large um, infrastructure platforms at many, many airports, which can be configured um, in a way that allows travel to be turned on again in the right way, like this low touch stuff, like the fact that biometrics is already out there. I think it's not so much about large investments, it's about rolling that stuff that builds on a, a foundation that's already been invested in um, more rapidly. So it's not really about big expenditure for airports or airlines at all. It's about leveraging what's really out there and about seeing some of the more innovative stuff coming around faster. So I think um, governments are very keen to do things which enable travel to switch on again. And as things open up again, we're standing by, we're already talking to many, many countries about how to switch on the new rules that allow people to start flowing into the country again. So we don't see so much of a cost issue at all with government. We think governments are, are willing to spend what they need to to switch their economies on again. Fantastic. So there's a way, what we need now is the will. So it looks like it can get safe to fly. That's what we want to get that message out there. It can be done. Let's just do it. Andrew, thank you very much for joining us.